Right then guys, went back to the next video. This time, as you can see, it's DDR5 time. Panther DDR5. From what you can see here, it's 6400 megahertz. It has RGB on top and there is the latency. It's a CL32-3939 by 84. A surprising vision for a new tradition. Al uh, aluminium alloy heatsink with an excellent heat dissipation. Intel XMP 3.0 and AMD Expo certified. QVL compatibility certification. Low power and high intensity. This particular kit of DDR5 does feature a striking lighting flash design that symbolizes the unleashed power within. Embrace the captivating visual experience provided by the dynamic seven color RGB lighting. Right then, so when it comes to the overall benchmarking, now what I've done is two different types of tests, one without Expo enabled and the other with Expo enabled, so then you can actually see a rough idea, gives you the overall differences as for performance. First of all, we'll start off with the Panther RGB uh, RAM. This is at, without Expo enabled, so it does default to a 4800 megahertz. When it comes to Geekbench single core, it's 2808. Multi core is 16,156. Cinebench R23 scores a single core is 1933. Multi core, 25,666. And 3D Mark Steel Nomad. The FPS counter was at 42 FPS. Now, this is actually enabling. Export so it went up to 6400 megahertz. So for Geekbench single core, it went to a 2940, multi core went to a 17612. Cinebench R23, the single core was 1941, and the multi core was 23966. 3D Mark CPU, th sorry, 3D Mark. Steel Nomad was the same FPS at 42 FPS again. Okay, so I added the Lexar Ares DDR5 because that is the kit I use in my editing rig. Now, at default with no export enabled, it does default to 5200 megahertz. Sorry, for Geekbench, it does do a single core of 2841. Multi-core 16163, where... Cinebench R23 is a single core at 1908 with a multi core 25,564 and 3D Mark Steel Nomad 42 frames per second again. Now, this is enabling export, and what I will say the Lex Aries RAM is specifically export certified, so it does go to 6000 megahertz. Now, when it comes to the Geekbench, the single core is 2918 with a multi-core score of 18,429. Cinebench R23, the single core was 1940 by a 28,372 multi-core. 3D Mark Steel Nomad was also again a 42 FPS rating. Okay then, so are you ready to actually upgrade to DDR5? Then that's up to you. But if you're on DDR4, APESA does also do DDR4 as well. Now, for this, the performance, yes, compared to the 6,000 uh, 6, megahertz Expo certified Lexar Ares RAM, yes, this did perform a little bit worse, but that is because the overall timings and the cast latency is also a lot looser. The tighter the timings, the faster it will be. That's got definitely much tighter timings compared to this. But then again, this runs at 6400 megahertz, so it's an, an extra 400 megahertz when it comes to the overall speed. Now, capacity, this is a 32 gig kit, just like my Aries. This is a, a review and an overall look at this specific RAM. It's not me giving you a head-to-head -head to show you what the performance compared to other RAM is. I included that because it's the only other 32 gig kit I've got here. So the performance is not bad, it's there. I like the overall RGB effect. I'll make sure I put up something by you so you guys can actually see the RGB effect. It looks really, really nice. It does look really nice in the system. I like it that this isn't really tall RAM. Compared to the Aries, this is actually a little bit smaller. 
so it, this would fit in a lot more small form factor cases like like if you've got a really small build or something or if you're in a big case but you've got a massive cooler like a dark rock pro 5 or an nh uh, d15 g2 something like that this this is the height requirement is fantastic so look it does everything it says on the box it performs well it looks fantastic i like the overall panther logo i think that looks really cool and not many brands actually put that type of thing on their rgb i wish more brands like kingston stuff like that i wish they would come out with out of the box type thinking when it comes to overall ram design yes it's only aesthetically but at the end of the day if you was going to buy ram and ddr5 is cheap at the moment but the higher the the capacity the more the money it costs and i think if you're paying for 130 pound for a ddr5 kit that's 32 gigs i honestly think that it should look its best for the price point but that's me that's just my personal opinion you take that with however you want but overall this performs well it gets my stamp of approval and you will be seeing this in the future because i will be buying or either trying to get an intel test rig with ddr5 support so i can use ddr5 with intel for my overall testing so make sure you subscribe don't forget that i've got loads of other stuff coming a letter the pixel 32 inch ultra wide gaming monitor i've got stuff coming from target as well i've got stuff coming from pc cooler they've just offered me like anything i wanted so i've requested four items and that's pretty much it guys look i hope you enjoyed the video have a good weekend and week ahead to view this is richard from welsh tech good bye